Welcome to Channel X TV and delighted to be joined by Rick and Zoe today from To Be Tan. So welcome, how are you? Very well. How's yourself? Look, To Be Tan, it's a relatively new business, four years old. How did you get started and what made you get into the business? So uh, I'll tell you exactly. My, my son had graduated from university. I've always been in business since before I even left school. I've always had some kind of side hustle or some kind of small business. Uh, I, I don't think I've actually ever had a job, to be fair. Yeah. And my son had graduated from university. He was wanting to be a micro, it was microbiology he'd done at university. He was wanting to be pharmaceutical sales is what he wanted to be, is global pharmaceutical sales. And he had left the university and I'd say to him, we should start a small business together. He says, what would you like to do? I says, I'm not sure. I says, but just until you get your career started, let's do a small business and see how life takes it. He says, okay, what will we do? I says, I don't know. Let's brainstorm this and try and find this out. He said, okay, so well, we're brainstorming. What about this? What about that? And we're looking at all different opportunities that at the time. And one day, me and my son have always went for sunbeds and we always went together as well. And he said, do you want to go for a sunbed, Dad? I said, yeah, let's go. So we went for a sunbed. Yeah. We went into the sunbed shop. Uh, and then when we came out, I says, Jano, that's what we're going to do. He says, what? I says, we're going to do sunbed creams. And he says, really? That's really strange. I says, we're going to do sunbed creams. I says, but what we're going to do is different from everybody else. Because at the time, people just went to the shop and picked off the shelf what was available. Nobody was really doing social media, uh, sort of doing social media businesses. They weren't, they weren't really a thing like the way they are now. So I says, uh, there was one or two. So I said, let's do it. I says, but where we are going to differ, we are going e com. I says, we're not going to sell in store. We're going to do e com. I says, but we are going to, we're just going to bash the social media and we are going to be all over social media. So I said, let's do it. So six months later, we got our first shipment in. And we'd got our website built, we got our branding done and whatnot, we'd done everything and we put it on to, we opened our, our store, uh, which was just a website at the time, because TikTok, never, I don't know if TikTok was actually available at the time. Hmm. Or TikTok, TikTok shop TikTok, certainly wasn't. <laughs> TikTok shop certainly wasn't at the time. So... We would, uh, so we sold through our website, and and it started. It was doing quite well. It was ticking away, and we were quite happy with it. And uh, I think so. Year year one, year two was we decided to do uh, influencer uh, brand trips. It was, and we were going to Ibiza every second weekend or so. We were taking influencers to um, uh, to Ibiza, and we started, you know, we we're going to big parties, pool parties and stuff, and we were doing a lot of sort of top funnel kind of marketing, really, just getting the brand out there and getting people talking about it. And each one of the influencers had a code, which they would advertise on their social media, drew business yeah. back to the website. We were smashing it. We were going, th you know, the, 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 at the time, the sales were just, you know, on, on the up and the brand awareness just exploded. And then I think it was the beginning of year three or was it the end of year two that I started, I was watching TikTok more often because I was getting more into social media. I didn't have no social media when I first started to be tanned. Uh, I'm a wee bit older than the generation that kind of were, were using, that, using it at the time. So I think it was the end of year two or the kind of middle of year two. TikTok shop started coming about, but yeah. it wasn't big at all. And I'd say to my son, I remember the time, I remember Ian saying, and we were in Ibiza, and I says, Jano, look at that. And there was somebody selling stuff on TikTok. I says, that's the next big thing. He says, you think so? I says, you mark my words. TikTok shop's the next big thing. You need to get us on the TikTok shop. So we were trying, we're on it, we're trying to get on it. Uh, we were still such a small company and a very small team at the time. Uh, we eventually got onto it. And I think it was in the second month that we had opened our TikTok shop, okay? We went to Ibiza and I says, let's just make TikToks. This full trip that we do, let's just make, everybody make TikToks. So we spoke to all the influencers and says, we only want TikToks for this trip. Everybody post on TikTok. And then we woke so, up one day and the office phone just says, I don't know what you're doing over there, but you need to stop it. And we says, what's up? They says, we've got 2,000 orders in the warehouse. You need to stop it. We've not got enough staff. I says, how much? They're like, we've got 2,000 orders and they're coming in faster than we can make them. 
the girls that were doing the TikTok, it just exploded in one day. It exploded, uh, and we were doing fantastic. Uh, I think, Zoe, did, when did you join us? I think that was at that time, was it not? Yeah, because I was previously working at a TikTok agency where I basically did the affiliate side, which I think you met some of the agencies on that day, Chris. So I was helping creators earn money, and one of the creators that I help worked at To Be Tanned at doing the TikToks for them. And then it was the second branch that you went on from when you started TikTok that I came on and just said, oh, I'll come and help out. So yeah. so, so, it, so it had met, she had been seeing the work that we were doing and she messages us and says, absolute love for your brand. I love what you're doing. I'd love to be part of that team. Uh, and then we spoke to Zoe. Uh, we took Zoe on and we built a, a small team down in Stoke-on-Trent who Zoe leads, which is a social media team. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is actually really fascinating because most brands have a business, decide to go on TikTok and then look for influencers where you've come totally other way. You've built your influencers uh -huh. and then took them onto TikTok. That's right. And I, I, I think that's totally fascinating. Hello. But tell me about the shape of the business today. How, how much is it on TikTok? How much is on web website? It's probably at the moment maybe about 50-50, uh, both 50-50 is, is, is kind of where we are at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think last year uh, it was a little bit more, but we, basically when we first started on TikTok, we had no competition either because TikTok shop was brand new. We had not, so the platform was ours. Whereabouts is now there is you know this uncountable the amount of tanning brands that are on TikTok now, mm. uh, but it, it was uh, I when we first had it there was no competition we we owned the platform at the time you know it's a good place to start but so <laughs> we actually met at a TikTok event where you were actually meeting potential new creators to to, to sell your products for those that don't understand how TikTok and affiliates work. Can you just talk us through the, the relationship between yourselves as a brand and the, the creators and how the affiliate program works? Yeah, so the, there's a there's about three different ways that you can work with affiliates on TikTok. The first would be through the affiliate creator marketplace. So that essentially would be we would list the product and we would make an open plan and anyone who is anyone and is a creator and obviously fits the the criteria for TikTok creators can then request a sample and we can accept it. Um, and you can do like targeted plans and things, but mainly that's how a brand would work. There's now things, which is where I previously used to work, which is a TSP. So it's TSPs used to be called caps, but TikTok shop partners basically will run creator campaigns for brands because they have a network of creators that they closely manage and work with. So that's the other way. And then the other way is to obviously do the traditional uh, influencer marketing in outreaching yourself, going through yep. the agencies. Um, but I think the wide variety is really good for TikTok because we can decide what we want to do per campaign. So we've got a product launching that, you know, we don't have as many samples for. So we won't just put that as an open plan and we'll strategically choose the creators. But our hero products are consistently on an open plan where people can request all day every day every week and we can then go through and manually choose yes and no um and TikTok kind of binds all their information together so i also don't have to chase them for like addresses you know like their phone yeah. number so like all that all of it's done through TikTok. so it's a really easy process just all you do is click yes and then TikTok will bank all the content um but i think it does depend on like the size of your business how big your team is i can imagine a really large business would just do that um, and I think smaller businesses would maybe work more with TSPs. Hmm. And I think it's really interesting what you said there, the, the, the strategy of how to choose which one to go through. If you've got a hero product that's always selling, then make it widely open. But if you've got a new product launch and maybe limited stock, then that's the time to start handpicking creators to work with. Yeah. But it, something it, else, it, I'm, yeah. sorry. I was just saying it changes every day. Like you think you know the best way to do it. And then TikTok will come in with a new platform, a new strategy, a new campaign, and everything goes up in the air. So I think you've got to be really hot on your feet on what is best at the time. 
So something else you've got coming up is a 12 hour TikTok live this Sunday. And to celebrate, I believe your fourth birthday. So congratulations. Thank you. But how have you been preparing for a 12 hour TikTok live? That's a long time to be broadcasting for. It's, do you know, it's actually really easy to uh, to organise these things. You just give them to Zoe, and Zoe does everything for me. So. <laughs> well, I was going to say blood, sweat, and tears, and you came out with that. Um, incredibly, it's a really stressful process if you really want it to be successful. Like I feel like we're all stressed because we believe in the potential that it has. And every, every single member of the team wants it to do that well, that we are doing the utmost. For a brand just to do a 12-hour live is not difficult. Obviously, like, it, once you've you got used to bit presenting, that's not the hard part. It's the strategy behind it, the sales strategy, the product strategy, your timings, your run-through, the technology. Like, there's so much behind the production side if you want it to look like the best live stream TikTok's got that day. Yeah. So, well, good luck with that, and uh, I look forward to hearing the results. But you've obviously grown massively in four short years. What's kind of next for the business? Where do you see yourselves going? Is it just more of the same products on TikTok? Are you going to expand to other platforms? Are you introducing new lines? Where, where do you see the, pro the, the business in kind of another four years' time? So where where the brand is going at the moment, we're actually we've just opened up an American company. So we are going to America. Uh, we've been uh, outreached by uh, Walmart. Walmart contacted us when we'd set up over there. So we're really excited about that. But we're also going on to TikTok Shop America as well. Uh, as in for uh, like products and stuff, no, the, the full product range is about to change. Uh, by this time next year, we'll have like a, a full cosmetic range, but more like beauty range. Sorry, a beauty mm. range. We'll have uh, we'll have more suntan creams as well, but we're also going to uh, sunscreen. Uh, so that we can sort of hit the tourist industry. Uh, eventually, we would love to be more in Europe and that as well, you know, where the tourists go and stuff. So we've got a full range of sunscreens coming out next year, which which will be a really good thing for, for 2B Tan. But we're also trying to get into big retail uh, now uh, with, with the new products and stuff that we're, we're, we're bringing out. It'd be lovely to get into retail in the UK, Europe and America. But first of all, in America, TikTok shows america because we know what tiktok can do for a business really quickly yeah and i i think it's true to say for many businesses that once you begin tiktok it opens the door into other retailers i mean you say you've already got walmart knocking on the door but there will be others as well that that want to stock your brand yep. just because they've seen seen yep. you on tiktok and success from there and, and obviously with the brand image and the way that we do stuff, what we stand for and that is like, you know, these other companies are loving what, what we're doing. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to buy into the brand as well. Tesco also reached out to us. Uh, well, I think we should be in Tesco buying next week. We are the first tanning that, uh, company that is more a tan accelerator company that Tesco has ever taken on. That's how big a deal that 2B Tanned has became. Uh, and that, that, uh, outreach and that sort of product, uh, sort of brand awareness, all came from TikTok. Amazing. Huge congratulations on the business. I do have one final question, though. And you started on TikTok just as TikTok Shop was launching. And as you said, you, you more or less owned tanning on TikTok at that point. For businesses going in today, and Perhaps, for, like yourself, going on to TikTok US, where there are a lot more businesses and a lot more awareness. What advice have you got for a business to really accelerate their TikTok growth when when they launch? Well, you know, it's it's all about getting out there. Uh, be consistent with your content uh, and make sure your your content represents what your brand stands for. Uh, yeah. Zoe and her and, team. Yeah, I was going to say that's your job, Zoe, isn't it? As a head, yeah. head, head of head of creative. <laughs> yeah, I think I would say that for me, if someone asked me that, and like, I get people all the time asking me like that exact question, um, like people that have got like big businesses and they like they can't believe the world of TikTok. But it all comes down to the product that you're selling. Like if I if you're going to bring out a product that's already on the market and it's 
a, a similar product to something that's already trending and it is a hero, you are likely not to get the same traction. You need to bring something new that people are actually going to want. And then when you do that, like, for example, that vegetable cutter that went viral on TikTok and it was it was something new and it was something handy that nobody had in their kitchen. And everyone was like, this is a great gadget. And it went viral. But now all the copycat brands that are bringing it out, they don't sell yeah. any. So I think it's like bringing something out that you believe in and is new and you haven't just thought, do you know what? They're doing really well. I'm going to bring out something similar. Yeah, I, I, I think that if you are you want to be successful on TikTok, quite likely what Zoe said is you need to be kind of new. You need to be inventive as well. And, uh, you know, so like what Zoe said about the potato peelers, a lot of people jump on a trend and try to be as successful as that trend. You're never going to be as successful as the person who originated it. Uh, you, you need to be very inventive and very imaginative, you know. I mean, look at me sitting in a pink room and a throne. <laughs> Great boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> and a boardroom so there's uh you you need to have imagination and people love to see people do well as well so you know and, and i've seen like some of the bigger brands on tiktok coming on and, and maybe not being as successful as some of the smaller brands that, that that people love to buy into people as well you know so uh i mean it took me quite a long time to even become a presenter on our own uh tiktok lives i, I wouldn't go on any of them because I just felt it wasn't my game. Uh, but since I've come on, the people that are like, what's it like, Zoe, when I come on? I've got fans on, on yeah. our TikTok. Yeah, we, we started it off when we used to do flash sales. We He would be on the phone and I would call him and be like, and it was like the man behind the like phone, who is it? He's just given us all everything we want. And now he goes on and... I'll be doing the best thing I've ever done and people will still be asking for it. So, so you used to say, I'll just phone the boss man, I'll just phone the boss man. Hey, but boss man, what can we do this, that? And I'd be like, oh, I'll just do it for whatever. See, now, I'm, I now, like, you know, walk into the airport and I'm getting stopped and people shouting, all right, boss man. So, like, people know me now as boss man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually a, a really cute ta tactic for a lot of businesses to actually phone someone live that they can't see and get the deal for them. I think more people should do that on TikTok. Deal or no deal, wasn't it? He used to phone the banker, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Boss man instead of banker. <laughs> But for anyone that wants to find out more about you, I know they can go to tobetanned.com, your website, or just search to be tanned on, on TikTok to find your TikTok. And we'll put a, put the links below this video as well. But Zoe and Rick, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been fascinating. And looking forward to your live on Sunday. No hassle. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.